the Lord be with you. And also with you. <laughs> Good morning and welcome to our, again, virtual worship on this Palm Passion Sunday. Um, as these weeks stretch into one another, it continues to be stranger and stranger to gather together in this way, and yet we remain convinced that God is still God, and God is still calling us to gather even through these unusual circumstances. So we, may we know God's presence with us as we worship today. Let's join in our gathering litany that has become such an anchor for us in our worship. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, the light, the light no, no darkness, darkness can overcome. Jesus Christ is the word made flesh. Through the word, we, we discover grace and truth. Jesus Christ is the living water. At the font, we are marked as Christ's own forever. Jesus Christ is the bread of life. At the table, the bread is shared with all who hunger. Jesus Christ is the cup of salvation. At, At the, the table, table, the cup is shared with all who thirst. answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. The Lord has done it this very day. Let us rejoice today and be glad. Lord, save us. Lord, grant us success. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. From the house of the Lord we bless you. festal procession up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will praise you. You are my God, and I will exalt you. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. God, as we stand at the gates of the city, give us grace to recognize the king we proclaim and courage to be part of your kingdom. Even when it goes against our ways and the ways of the world, even when it leads us where we do not want to go, empower us to free ourselves from the tempting alternatives of power and wealth and status, and embolden us to live lives of thanksgiving and praise. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest heaven. Amen. Now our opening hymn will sing Hosanna Loud Hosanna.
in abundance in the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And together we say, Amen. Amen. <laughs> we sing, we wave our branches, we shout, Hosanna. And then the truth is we turn away to go back to our old ways, our old lives, our old sins. But God is in the business of granting forgiveness and filling us with new life. So let us confess to the one who comes to fill us with grace. Let us pray together. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us amend what we are and direct what we shall be so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. of despair. Proclaim it to the sons of sadness. Christ has come to save us. Hosanna. We will give our thanks to God who comes to bring us grace, hope, and life. Hosanna in the highest. Amen. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. God, again, we come to you longing for light, longing to see and to know your light revealed to us in and through your word for us this day. May our eyes and ears and whole lives be opened and transformed by your light in this place, in this day, in this time. In Christ's name we pray. Our first scripture reading this morning, well, I guess second, the psalm was the first, comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. Listen for the word of God. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. This took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, tell the daughter of Zion, look, your king is coming to you, humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil 
asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you O Christ. Christ. When we were originally planning for Lent way back in January, we were anticipating this day, Palm Sunday, and its timing with the beginning of spring break for public schools in our area. So we purposefully ordered fewer palms, and we did a little lamenting together about how few children would likely be in worship to wave palms. And yet we were sure it would still be a celebrative service. Wow, has life ever changed? <laughs> Record numbers of people are home in West Michigan. And yet the streets are as quiet or quieter than a typical spring break, at least in terms of car traffic. On the nicer days, people are certainly out and about, and yet there's not really a triumphant feel about it all. In fact, most days it feels more like the weight of a funeral pall draped over our lives as we struggle together to find a new normal. I found a cobweb in our sanctuary this week. Just a single thread, stretching from one pew to the next, and no, it was not a front pew. I felt my heart cringe at the reality of our not being able to gather together in a beloved sacred space, to not be able to form a crowd that could boldly shout and sing Hosanna in the face of all we need saving from. I wonder what it means to join our voices in the midst of a global pandemic, proclaiming Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest heaven. Matthew's telling of Jesus' triumphal entry includes not only the glorious and raucous parade into Jerusalem, but some brief commentary about how this event was received. He says the city was in turmoil, that everyone was asking who this is, that the crowds had an answer. Jesus, the prophet, the one from Nazareth in Galilee. As we remember and celebrate Palm Sunday today, the story comes in a time of turmoil. Many days it feels like there are endless unknowns that there are more questions than answers. A month or two prior to the pandemic, I was having my annual existential crisis, where I ask all kinds of questions about what I believe and why, and what role the church plays in the world, and what does it mean to be a pastor in the year 2020? It was also timed with starting a new Bible reading plan that of course had me smack in the middle of the first few books of the Bible, and let me tell you, there are a lot of weird stories in there. And then Eric and I decided to watch the Netflix series, Messiah. If you haven't seen it, the premise of the show is, as you might imagine by its name, the alleged second coming of Christ. Essentially, the show just added to my big wrestlings about belief and faith and what it means to follow Jesus. I found myself asking, if something like this really happened today, would I be an early adapter and follower, or would I be a skeptic? My suspicions were more on the skeptic side, so then I found myself asking what it would take. What would it take for me to be convinced? The truth is I don't have any answers. In fact, I probably have a lot more questions. In this season, it seems easier to say more of what I don't believe. And sometimes I think that's an important way, an important way in on this journey of faith. Thinking of that city in turmoil upon Jesus' triumphal entry, we know there were some who were already convinced, right? They were the ones who had joined the parade, who were shouting the raucous hosannas. They were all in following this prophet, healer, and teacher. And there were others who were hearing about it and wondering what it all meant. Probably there was anticipation of possible violence or riots. 
Surely there was wondering how the government or religious leaders might respond to this strange thing. Clearly, there were people who heard Jesus' name spoken that day and had probably never heard of him before. Would Nazareth mean anything to them? Our world is in turmoil, and yet not everyone is experiencing that turmoil in the same way. And we know that for many, today is just another day with no significance outside of what the day might bring. And yet for us in the church, we claim significance of this day. Significance that begins the holiest of weeks, leading us to the triumph of Easter, a punchline no one in the crowd or city could have anticipated then or maybe even now. So again, I find myself wondering, in the midst of a global pandemic, what does it mean to wave our palms and to proclaim together, Hosanna to the Son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. So I wonder how this passage from Isaiah helps us to answer the question that Pastor Miriam asked. 
In the midst of a global pandemic, what does it mean for us to join our voices in proclaiming Hosanna? What does it mean for us to set our face on this prophet from Nazareth in Galilee? And not only set our face, but set it like flint. Set it like a rock. What does it mean for us to shout Hosanna and set our face when all around us is turmoil? Now, it might first be important to notice why the servant sets his face. The servant doesn't just set his face because it seemed like a good thing to do at the time. The servant says this, the Lord has given me. The Lord wakens me. One might hear echoes of great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. So the Lord has given me. The Lord wakens me. God has opened my ear. God helps me. You could sum them up saying that the Lord has provided. And because the Lord has provided, therefore, I will set my face like flint. And I know that I will not be put to shame. God has done this and continues to do this, and therefore I will set my face, knowing that God will continue to do as he has promised. Reenacting the ancient story, I see the patterns time and time again that God is moving, and God will continue to move, and therefore I can set my face like flint. Therefore I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I can stand strong against my adversaries as if in a courtroom and declare, Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me. Who will declare me guilty? Therefore, I can declare like Paul in Romans 8, If God is for me, who can be against me? Therefore, I can stand as some biblical version of Robert De Niro. And declare to the forces at work all around me, are you talking to me? Are you talking to me? Because if you are talking to me, know that this is who is on my side. Know that this is who is in charge of my life. Know that this is who is steadfast in my life. Know that this is who has carried me through all the trials and tribulations. Know that this is who will continue to carry me all the days of my life. Whereas the rest of it? The rest of it will wear out like a garment. The rest of it, the moth, will eat up. Friends, this will be a weird Holy Week. That is without a doubt. But it may be a Holy Week that we do not soon forget. And in the midst of all this weirdness, I wonder if it may give us the, the ability to approach Holy Week differently somehow. Right? If the world has been turned upside down, does it give us the ability to view things from a different angle? Does it give us new space to approach a very familiar story with new lenses? Does it give us a chance to re-engage in some way? Friends, may this be a holy week where we reenact the ancient story. And in doing so, remind ourselves why. Why we can set our faces like flint. Why we can set our faces on Jesus. May this Holy Week bring blessings we may never have imagined. May our faith be renewed in ways we've never expected or experienced. May the movement towards the cross this week move us deeper in our commitment to Christ. And in all, may we know deeply, deeply that God is for us. And that if God is for us, who could possibly stand against us? In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen.
of transformation. We are reminded this day that Jesus' ride into Jerusalem was more than a show, more than a simple provocation, more than the beginning of a cute celebration. It was a signal that things are changing, an unmistakably potent message to the powers that be that the world as we know it is becoming the world as it should be. It was a radical act of defiance directed against those in his day who wielded power through violence, oppression, and tyranny. It is no less radical, no less tame for those who do the same today. This simple ride reminds us and tells the whole world that you are indeed coming to make all things new. You are coming to turn weapons of war into instruments of peace. You are coming to release those who find themselves in all manners of bondage, chains of injustice, chains of addiction, chains of conformity and apathy. You are coming to provide for the poor, food for the hungry and shelter for the homeless. You are coming to assure the dignity and equality of all who are marginalized or oppressed. You are coming to end violence and divisions, to provide safe communities and opportunities for education. You are coming to offer healing and wholeness, comfort, consolation, and hope. You are coming to transform all that we know. You are coming to save us. Like humble Jesus riding into town on a lowly colt, you aren't coming in grandeur. You aren't coming with thunder and lightning. You aren't making an epic entrance. You're coming through the mystery of love, of love incarnate. Through your church, empowered by your spirit. Through lives transformed and inspired through ordinary people like us, blessed by you to do extraordinary things. Come, gracious God, into a world that longs for change, a world that needs your love, a world full of your own children, a world ripe with hope and potential. Blessed are those who come in your name, O oh God. We have come. We will go. And now we pray. We pray for your coming kingdom emerging all around us, using the words Jesus taught us, saying, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Friends, before we join in our offering of our lives litany, just a, a couple notes to say. Um, as we journey together this Holy Week, we invite you to tune in with us each day at noon for a brief devotional service. We'll send um, access to those bulletins online um, via email today, and we'll post them on Facebook again tomorrow. And to know that we continue to hold each of you in our prayers as we do this journey together in these strange times. We're particularly mindful of um, our wider church in the RCA. Um, we have lost a dear, dear saint, um, our first COVID-19 death, um, or more well known in the RCA. So Al Jansen, who was a, a wonderful pastor and general synod professor, um, died uh, two days ago, yesterday, two days ago. In, um, in Albany, New York. So our prayers are um, with the Jansen family, um, the wider family, and all of those who are impacted by this, this um, loss and a reminder um, to us that more loss is coming. And so we continue to need to stand together as the people of God in this time. Let's uh, commit our lives together. Jesus Christ is the cup of salvation, nourished at the table, we bring refreshment to the world. Jesus Christ is the bread of life, strengthened at the table. We bring food to the world. Jesus Christ is the living water, made new at the font. We bring life to the world. Jesus Christ is the word made flesh, 
sustained by the word. We bring Christ, Christ to, to the, the world. world. Jesus Christ is the light of the world, transformed by Christ's light. We, we bring, bring light, light to, to the world. world. Our ascending hymn today is When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. As we lay down the palm branches and with them we lay down our belief that there is another way for you to be God. As the last echo of the final Hosanna fades, so does our hope that this journey can end in any other way. The week stretches ahead, glory less and pain full. Whether we walk with all faith or none, we look towards the cross knowing it is both the most human and most divine of all journeys. Travel the road with courage, with love, and with the uneasy peace that is the gift of faith into this holiest of weeks. Amen. Amen. We invite you to stay online as we listen to you closely today. 